Hi friends, it's Jarle here. I am back today with a slightly different video. I will be taking a closer look at the Gansai Tambi watercolor set today. I will also be making two watercolor backgrounds using this set. As you just saw, I already swatched them out when I first got the set. This is just on the inside of the packaging. But since I haven't played uh, with these watercolors in ages, I really wanted to try them out again. And the best way to explore watercolors is to swatch them, I think. As you can see, this watercolor set has different individual pans. And these pans are larger than those in other watercolor sets I own. So it holds lots of paint, but it also allows easy access for the brush. Also, I like that I can take out the individual pans. So if I only need about two or three colors, I can just remove the pans from the set and place them next to my watercolor project. To make sure that you'll place them on the right spot again, it has a number on the back of each pan, which corresponds with the number in the set itself. For my swatch chart, I trimmed down a piece of paper to fit inside this set. Um, I always like to have my swatch chart inside my watercolor set. I'm also using a brush from uh, Tonic Studios. Um, this is a size 9 round brush. I'm also just exploring this brush set from Tonic Studios. I find uh, it can contain a lot of paint and water. So, so far I'm happy with the quality of these brushes. So here you see me swatching all of the colors. Um, I always go in with the full color and then I rinse my brush uh, I dab it off on a paper towel and then I go back in um, to spread out the color. And this gives me an idea of how the full color looks and also how it fades out when you add more water. These watercolors are known for their uh, vibrant and intense colors. And this is also what I like about this set. Uh, I don't think I will use these for detailed watercoloring of stamped images, but for watercolor washes and watercolor backgrounds, these are great. There are also different sets available. Uh, I have this 36 set, but I know you also have an 18 and a 48 set. Like I mentioned before, I've had this set for quite a while, but the last two years or so, I just haven't been watercoloring that often. I just kind of forgot this medium, so <laughs> I don't know uh, why that happened. So, because I really want to get back into watercoloring, I'm swatching these colors out again. What surprised me is actually how many greens this set has. I really love using greens in watercolor projects, so it's fun that it has this many options of green. I also know that many Gansai Tambi sets also include special colors uh, like metallics or pearlescent shades. And you can see them uh, later in the video when I'm sw swatching them out. Now, since also since I swatched this, I also rediscovered the beautiful black color. So whenever I'm doing any black splatters on my card projects, I always do it with the black that's included in this set. I think whether you're a seasoned artist or just starting your creative journey, Gansai Tambi watercolors are definitely worth considering, in my opinion. Uh, the colors are great and the vibrancy is just amazing. Um, like I said before, I think these are fantastic for watercolor backgrounds and also like for a nighttime sky, for example. By the way, for this swatch chart, I used some Florence textured watercolor paper. I don't know if I say this right. Uh, is it Florence cardstock or Florence uh, cardstock, like in French? 
uh, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, also with a black micron pen, I added the names of each color and the color numbers on the chart as well. As always, you can find a full supply list in the description box below. Just look at the vibrancy of all these colors. I really, really love them. Now, as that last row of colors didn't really stand out on the white paper, I decided to swatch them on black paper as well. Uh, in fact, it's just the two uh, or the first two colors of that last row that you can't really see on the white paper. Um, the two last colors are more metallic, so you can see them on white, but these are more beautiful when you paint with them on black paper. So here's a final look of my swatch charts of today. All the colors on white watercolor paper and the last four colors also on black watercolor paper. I hope this gives you more of an idea of all the colors in the 36 Gansai Tambi set. As I wanted to experiment some more, I decided to make two watercolor backgrounds using this set. I'm using a flat brush from Tonic Studios for the backgrounds and then uh, that round brush was used for the white splatters on one of the backgrounds. I taped some Florence cardstock on my Make Art Station and it is just slightly larger than an A2 sized panel. When you're using lots of water it's always best to tape your paper down, so it prevents it from warping. And I started by wetting the entire panel with just clean water, making sure it's all nice and wet. I wanted to create a rainbow of colors on this background, just testing out how much water the watercolor paper can hold and how each color blends into one another. So I started with a uh, red shade and then I came in with an orange. I slightly overlap the colors so they blend nicely into one another. Also, I tilted my board just a little bit so the watercolors could spread down more, if that makes any sense. Um, then I also added in uh, a little bit of yellow. But on the final card, you won't really see that yellow very much. It kind of got lost between the orange and the green. You really have to make sure to add enough water. You really want a nice blend between the colors so there are no harsh lines. And if you do have any harsh lines, just add water and they'll magically disappear. Then I also added the green shade, but it's more kind of like a yellow green, I think. And then I chose a blue green as the final color. So what I said before about prepping the paper with water and then adding wet paint on top of it, this is called the wet on wet technique. Um, for these kinds of backgrounds, I like to use this technique to make sure everything blends nicely. I also use a flat brush because it's much more easy to use um, than a round brush when you're just like spreading horizontal stripes of paint. I dried the panel with my heat gun. Uh, you'll see that the piece always dries back just a little bit, so it's more pale than when the paint is still wet. So I did go over it with a second wash of the rainbow colors. So I actually did just the same thing, but now I didn't have a wet surface anymore. So it's more the wet on dry technique. And with this second layer, you can see that the colors are way more vibrant. So here is the final rainbow background. I really, really love it. And also that Florence uh, watercolor paper really holds lots of water. For my second background, I started the same way. I taped my panel on my Make Art Station and then I wet my whole panel again with lots of water. So exactly the same as I did before. 
But this time I want to create a gradient background, so I chose some different blue shades. Um, I started with a very pale blue color, dropping it in on the wet paper, and then I just came in with a few different blues of different intensity, overlapping the colors just a little bit so they blend nicely into uh, one another. Again, I dry the panel between different layers um, and then going over with a second layer really intensifies the colors. Now, I did speed up the video here quite a bit just because it's exactly the same as what I did before. Um, the colors really blend in nicely and so far I'm really impressed by that Florence uh, watercolor paper. I am absolutely in love with this uh, ultramarine color. I think it's so, so bright and vibrant. This panel could work well for an underwater scene. Um, maybe I should darken up the bottom just a little bit more when I want to add some ocean themed images. Off camera I did trim my two panels and I also splattered some white gouache on the blue background just to add something extra to the panel. I decided to just use a large sentiment die. Um, I went with the giant sanding big hugs from Lawn Fawn. I die cut it four times and I used the black sentiment for a shadow behind the white sentiment. After I glued the sentiments down, I just adhered the card panels to a white card base and on this uh, rainbow one I also added a few jewel drops just for a little bit of interest. This finishes off my project. I hope you liked this video. I will be back again soon with another card making video. Have a great day. Bye!